thank you very much for inviting me here. I'm uh, very pleased to be here back in London and uh, around all of you. And I'm um, very pleased to talk about how architecture and natural uh, lighting um, can stimulate our senses. Light is an important parameter for us humans to sense and perceive the spaces surrounding us. And the character of the light in a given space can be seen to influence our mood and well-being. Light describes our environments and light and shadows tell us about form, materials, texture, rhythm and history. To design buildings is to work with form and light. To work with a light aperture is to design not only the space's lighting, but also its appearance and atmosphere. The interior is the reverse side of the exterior, and the place where the atmosphere and character of the space is formed. A light aperture is not merely a communicator of exterior illumination, but probably the, most, the single most important element in the planning of a space's visual environment. The character of the skylight and sunlight, its intensity, direction and colors, influences how spaces and objects are accentuated and perceived. And most human knows by heart how their surroundings change according to the changes in light's character. For example, how spaces and objects shift character when clouds cover the sun, creating diffuse daylight where shadows are dissolved in a second. and by dynamic weather conditions where we sense how the atmosphere changes in a second from being bright and welcoming to dark and scary. Mostly we, think, mostly we link the natural light of being in connection with the nature. But the fact is well known, people spend more and more time in artificial illuminated environments, which makes it both, it's both worthwhile and essential to develop strategies that ensure that envi indoor environments can still positively stimulate our senses and enhance our feelings of living in connection with nature. Here light plays an important role and it's crucial that architectural ideas and concepts employ strategies for the use of daylight and artificial lighting. A lighting strategy should help integrating lighting into buildings in a natural way, so that in addition to meeting the functional needs, the lighting should help clarifying and refining the space and create inspiring atmospheres which positively influence experiences and comfort levels. The new Novo Nordisk headquarters located outside Copenhagen in Denmark is a notable example of how daylighting and artificial lighting are well integrated into the building design. The lighting for the headquarters planned in a close cooperation between Novo Nordisk, Henning Larsen Architects and Grundme Lighting. And I would like to use this project to exemplify how the lighting strategy is developed and realized and how the daylight and artificial light stimulate the senses in different ways. Home to the company's top management along with around 1,100 staff, the architecture consists of two office buildings sited in, a white landscape, in an inviting landscape inspired by the Danish forest. The largest of the two buildings, NN1, is a six stories tall, is characterized by a cylindric massing and comprises a central atrium, auditorium, offices, meeting spaces, cry rooms and library. The aperture of the atrium is shaped to transport the daylight into the building in a poetic and unique way that creates an exciting and welcoming atmosphere. The working areas are placed along the circular facade, creating good working condition for the employees. Early in the concept phase, a strategy for the lighting was developed to serve as a main guiding concept, which established a hierarchy between the daylighting and the artificial lighting elements. The overall strategy for the lighting has its focus on accentuating the building's iconic significance and identity, the movements and flows throughout the building and the building's appearance and functionality during the daytime, the evening, and nighttime hours. The specific lighting strategy has ensured sustainable lighting by prioritizing the lighting's illumination levels, its placement, and control. The strategy has been an important design parameter throughout the entire design and construction process. 
and the strategy is realized by converting the key elements of the strategy into technical solution, which I will show you in the next slide. The cylindrical form of the atria is highlighted by the vertical lighting of the wall surfaces in the atrium circulation zones, whereby the shape of the atrium is heightened. The vertical illumination works as well as wayfinding throughout the building and guidance through corridors and towards working and meeting areas. The circular staircase has lighting integrated into its handrail, which illuminates the wood shreds in a manner that reflects the light in a warm, glowing color. The safeguard element becomes a luminous parapet that flows and wraps its way around the glazed roof in the atrium, which is accentuated by pale blue light. The parapet illuminated in warm white light contrasts naturally with the pale blue. At the bottom of the atrium, smaller light zones are created within the greater space with the help of floor lamps, table lamps, and directed light from pole-mounted luminaires. These lighting elements create a more intimate ambience and smaller momentary space that can be used for short meetings and briefer stays. Throughout the entire design process, the focus remained on integrating the luminaires into the architecture and avoiding glare so that light is primarily visible when it hits the various surfaces. The design creates variation in light zones and lighting atmosphere, which simultaneously support the functional and aesthetic needs of the people using the building at the same, and at the same time stimulates their visual needs. The second building of the Novo Nordisk campus NN2 offers a sculptural atrium, offices, meeting rooms, a canteen, um, and like the building in N1, this building's visible focal point is its atrium, which visually and physically connects the four floors and various functions. The atrium has been designed using 50 skylight baffles that poetically disperse daylight into the space, into the building's core. The design and direction of the skylight baffles influence the play of light and shadows taking place throughout the days and across the year. On the occasion when light is insufficient during evening hours and winter months, the artificial lighting comes to aid. The concept for the design of the artificial lighting entails creating lighting that partly supports the daylighting during periods of limited natural light uh, and partly contributes to the general artificial lighting. Likewise, the artificial lighting has been designed to accentuate the tectonics of the skylight and to create a welcoming and exciting atmosphere in the atrium as a whole. The shape of the atrium's apertures and the building control system makes it possible to combine and regulate the resources of the daylight and the artificial lighting alike. Thus, it's possible to work with can be called a double dynamic setup, which combines the natural dynamic of the daylight as well as the dynamics that occur when the intensity and color temperature of the artificial lighting are changed over time. Based on analysis of the colors of the sky and the ways that the variable colors of artificial light appear in contrast to these, a color matrix for the artificial lighting was developed. Facts concerning the working hours of the employees and special days have also influenced the design of the artificial lighting. The artificial lighting has been planned using 10 different lighting scenarios, each program with a specific dynamic lighting configuration. The different color shades shift in a slow tempo, characterized by a soft and gradual transition from one shade to another. Most of the scenarios work with white light nuances, which span a spectrum from bluish light to neutral white light, and finally to warm light in, a, in the form of a dark golden hues. The scenes are programmed to align with the daytime lighting's diurnal and seasonal rhythms, as well as to demarcate special days, such as the World Diabetes Day. The combination of the predictable dynamic of the artificial lighting and the unpredictable dynamics of the daylight creates a double dynamic that is never the same. So at the following images, you can see some of the different lighting scenarios here with the white light and the white light and the golden hues and the white light 
and some cyan light turning into a more bluish palette, ending with the colors from inspired from the um, northern lighting. It's very difficult to see here. I hope you can see it on the screen clearly. <laughs> So my conclusion is that the character of the light and the way it is used and controlled is vital for humans' well-being. Holistic thinking regarding the use of daylighting and artificial lighting in concert can increase the quality of our surroundings and meet the varying demands of constantly changing lifestyle. The key is to balance and control the light in a rhythm and variation that makes a sense, a dynamic, without distracting or stressing the mind and body. Lighting with a balanced change in light intensity and colors reminds us of being in connection with nature, whilst also stimulating our senses, elevating our moods and improving general well-being. And then I will... Um, let you come very close to the skylight of the building so you for some moment can sense the change of light.